it's that time of year again. The leaves are rotting. The light of day is fading ever faster as the night grows darker. The cold chill of death lingers on the wind. <coughs> I can't keep doing that voice. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Anyways. Are you f***ing kidding me? I walked down a street the other day that looked like it was decorated by the Batman villain Two-Face. It went, spooky house, jolly house, spooky house, jolly house. I'm already hearing Christmas songs on the radio. The lady at the pharmacy was wearing a Santa hat. The worst part about it all is that as a Canadian, we've already had our Thanksgiving. Like a week ago. So the only thing standing between us and the March of the Damn Elves is Halloween. And even that is starting to fall. Okay, fine. Whatever. There's no escaping it, is there? What better way to celebrate the holiday season than by playing some spooky games? So join me as we try to drown out that holiday joy. Hey, speaking of which, cut that music. Thank you. Let's talk about the perfect spooky games to play during the Halloween season. And when I say spooky games, I don't only mean scary games. Some games on the list are scary, yes? But I'm gonna talk about all kinds of games that fit the spooky vibe. Whether or not you would actually consider them a scary game. Since I know most people like to just watch someone on YouTube play a scary game, rather than actually play it themselves, maybe you'll find something in this list that you're more comfortable playing by yourself. Or maybe you'll at least want to take some friends with you, like for our first game. Currently a PC exclusive, as well as an early access title. Phasmophobia sets you in the role of a paranormal investigator as you and your team explore haunted locations in order to gather evidence and deduce what type of ghost is haunting the area. From quaint little residences to abandoned schools and dark campgrounds, there are a wide variety of haunted locales to explore. The game can be enjoyed solo, but it really shines in multiplayer. To the point where I hardly bother playing the game by myself, you purchase equipment like cameras, salt, UV lights, motion detectors, and use all that to try and gather enough evidence. Each ghost has a different set of behaviors. Some are more aggressive, others mess up your equipment or throw objects around the room, and you really have to be on the lookout for when these things start hunting. Once you think you've figured out what type of ghost you're dealing with, you can take a guess and leave the location. If you were right on the money, then you get money. But you'll still pick up some cash for whatever evidence you gathered. It's still in early access. But it's always bothered me that all you do is guess what type of ghost it was, then leave. I'd love it if they added an objective to exercise the ghost, or capture it, or something at least. It just feels so anticlimactic. I have to get my ghost capturing fix on somehow. Thankfully, I know just the game. Luigi's Mansion 3 was released on GameCube, and there was a 3DS remake that hardly anyone talks about since it was released so late into the system's life cycle. There's also the sequels, Dark Moon and Luigi's Mansion 3, but the original was always my favorite. Despite the fact that Luigi's Mansion 3 probably has the best looking visuals of any Switch title. In this first game, Luigi wins a mansion and when he goes to take a look at it, finds out that it's haunted. His brother Mario also seems to be missing, so that means it's Luigi's time to shine. And this game actually lets you capture the ghosts. That's kind of the whole point actually. Especially with these unique ghosts that you have to examine carefully and exploit their weaknesses. It's not a scary game really, but there are some unnerving moments. Like this ghost baby, for example. While not super scary, the implication of a dead baby is definitely something you don't forget easily. The puzzles, characters, and environments in this original game were just more enticing to me than the sequels. And it's always fun sucking things up with a poltergust and hearing Luigi whistle or hum the mansion theme. The game isn't terribly long, lasting maybe five to six hours. The first time I ever beat this game was actually on a Halloween night several years ago. Too old to trick or treat, but also not old enough to go to any fun parties. Man, I miss dressing up and getting lots of candy. Simpler times. And until I have my own kids to exploit for trick or treating, at least I can relive those adventures with the next game. Costume Quest is available for a crapload of different platforms, and there is also a sequel, but I haven't beat that one yet. Maybe I'll get to it during this spooky season. Costume Quest is brought to you by the lovely minds over at Double Fine Productions, and apparently there's even a show based on the games. This game takes place on Old Hallow's Eve when your sibling is captured by a monster. You now have to rescue them with the help of the new friends you make along the way as you try to get home before curfew. It's an RPG where your class is decided by the costume you wear and the power of your moves is decided by the timing of your button presses. Costume Quest has that sense of charm you can only really find from the unique mind of Tim Schafer. Though the experience is also short-lived, clocking in at around the 5 hour mark. 
The sequel is apparently a little longer, but not by much. These are just fun little Halloween-themed RPG adventures that are well worth a play. Of course, after dressing up and trick-or-treating, the other fun part of Halloween was watching scary movies. But I figure, why not just play a scary game that feels like watching a movie? And that's exactly where Until Dawn comes into play. I didn't know this was still a PS4 exclusive. So many games are just timed exclusive these days. At least the PS5 is backwards compatible if you could find one at least. Until Dawn is one of those narrative-driven interactive games where the decisions you make directly influence the outcome of the story. You'll take control of eight different characters as they return to the lodge where a grim scene played out just one year ago, causing the disappearance of one of our character's sisters. The game starts off fairly unsuspecting, but things quickly unravel, and your actions will decide who survives until dawn. Because there are multiple outcomes, the game has a decent amount of replay value, and there's a fairly strict autosave system to prevent loading a previous save to bypass unfavorable outcomes. How do you rate our chances of survival? Hmm? I'm trying not to think about it. It's fun to play the game solo, or invite people over to watch, since this is a very interesting game to see people play. If you don't have a PS4, you can always check out The Quarry, which is available on more platforms. I haven't played that one though, so I can't personally speak for its quality, but it's pretty much the same concept as Until Dawn while taking more inspiration from slasher flicks. I was never really into those kinds of movies, but if you are, then I think you'll feel right at home in Murder House. Available for PC, Switch, PS4, and Xbox One, Murder House is a game that knows how to make you poop your pants. Taking inspiration from slasher flicks and PS1 era horror games, right down to the corny voice acting. Hold on, there's a phone in here. Let me go check it out, and you wait here. Did I- did I act wrong? Oh my god, the line actually does say there's no phone in here. Puppet combo, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sure, the graphics might not be to everyone's taste, but maybe the low detail is a good thing. As you run and hide from this psychotic Easter ripper, you'll have to participate in their little egg hunt if you want to make it out alive. The fixed camera angles and tank controls really sell that classic Resident Evil vibe, right down to how frustrating these mechanics can be to use in a panic. This one is a really short adventure, clocking in at around two to three hours maybe. The developer, Puppet Combo, has a few other games to check out, but they all follow the same general formula. After you've gotten tired of running and hiding from a psycho killer, maybe you'd like a taste of that action. And that's exactly where Dead by Daylight shines. This is a multiplayer survival horror game where one player gets to play as the killer, while the others form a team of survivors that try to escape from the killer. This is a very popular game, available for many platforms including mobile devices. I had no idea that was a thing. The game has received plenty of updates with new content over the years, so there's a lot to work towards in the progression system. The survivor's goal is to escape by repairing enough generators to power the exit gates, where the killer simply needs to capture and sacrifice the other players to a malevolent force known as the Entity. As you play, you gain experience that levels you up, giving new perks that can help you when playing as either the killer or survivors. I'll be honest though, your experience can be hit or miss depending on who you play with. Like all online games, you may encounter toxic players that ruin the fun for others. And there aren't really any offline single player options for the game either. The game can also be a tad on the grindy side if you want to get good perks and stuff. Still, at its best, Dead by Daylight is a fun and heart pounding experience. There aren't many games that let you be the terrifying monster, but there are a few, like Carrion. Of course this is more of a lab experiment gone wrong type of deal. You being the experiment. It's available for PC, Switch, Xbox, and Playstation. This is described as a reverse horror game where you control this tentacled abomination and devour anything in your path. It's kind of a metroidvania. As you progress, you obtain upgrades that allow you to reach previously inaccessible areas or hunt your prey in new and devilish ways. It's surprisingly fun to stalk your victims from the vents then bust out and devour everything in a flash. I also love the pixel art in this game. Everything looks fantastic, especially the way your tentacles just kind of slip into everything. As you get more upgrades and become bigger, you start to feel nearly invincible making you almost feel sorry for your victims. A running theme with most of these games is their rather short length, and this is no exception, lasting at maybe five hours or a little longer depending on how much you'd like to do. If you're looking for an experience to sink more time into, and you just can't get these lovely Lovecraftian tentacles out of your mind, then look no further than Bloodborne. Still a PS4 exclusive, but it's an absolute masterpiece. FromSoft really nailed the gothic style and Lovecraftian themes. 
It's a gameplay style similar to the Soul series of games, but Bloodborne encourages faster paced, more aggressive combat styles. No turtling behind shields or anything here. Game length is 30 to 40 hours, though I'm sure I spent double that in my playthrough. Bloodborne is a fairly difficult action RPG that is more than bound to test your patience as you get your butt kicked by terrifying monsters. It has online elements like co-op or PvP, as well as the randomly generated chalice dungeons if you're looking to just have some fun. Your objective is to navigate the violent streets of Yarnum during the night of the hunt in an effort to escape this nightmarish land, encountering deranged characters and slaying terrifying beasts all along the way. Every time you traverse the nightmare fog to confront a boss will leave you clenching your gut in anticipation. This right here is one of my top five fogs in gaming, probably just behind the foggy streets of Silent Hill 2. Available for PS2, 3, original Xbox, 360, and PC, well kinda. What you're seeing is gameplay of Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition. It's like a fan project that aims to improve the PC version of the game, and it's not too difficult to set up with just a bit of googling around. Silent Hill 2 is one of the OGs. This series, along with Resident Evil, helped to define survival horror games as we know them. What's great about Silent Hill 2 is that moments just stick with you. Well after you've beaten this game, you'll still be thinking about all you've experienced, what Silent Hill really is, what those monsters are, etc. Silent Hill 2 is roughly 8 hours in length with replay value if you want to get different endings. The game starts off rather slow with you just wandering around a foggy town and bashing things with a stick. You don't have much of a clue where you're going or what you're doing. Puzzles can also be really vague and the controls are antiquated, but Silent Hill 2 is still worth playing. At least until the possible remake is announced, which this game really deserves. Konami was really impressed with the success of the Resident Evil remakes and several Silent Hill projects are allegedly in development, so one could hope. On the topic of those Resident Evil remakes, we of course have the one game that started it all, Resident Evil 2 Remake, which is undeniably my favorite Resident Evil game. Available for PC, PS4 and 5, Xbox One and series, as well as Nintendo Switch through uh, cloud streaming unfortunately. The visuals are phenomenal, sound design is top notch, and the heart pounding action is extravagant. At the start of the game, ammo is scarce, hallways are dark, and enemies don't go down in a single headshot. Oftentimes, they'll take five shots to the head and still get up as if they didn't hear any bell. This feeling of uncertainty always creeps up, and you might begin to think it might be better to just shoot their limbs off and run past them. But then you run into this guy, the tyrant, Mr. Rex. He's not a constant threat throughout the game, but when he is around, he leaves quite the impression, especially when you're trying to locate key items to solve puzzles. Then you hear his big beefy footsteps creeping up on you. This was the game that made me realize my PC speakers were reversed. Every time I'd hear his footsteps coming from the right, I'd look over and see nothing, then turn around and he'd be right behind me. Might be a fun prank to pull on someone. By the end of the game, you'll have acquired a decent enough arsenal to take on most threats and start feeling like a real champ. Game length is around 8 hours for a full playthrough. With some replay value in the campaign and extra modes like the fourth survivor, this remake really gave Resident Evil 2 the glow up it needed. Which is why I'm super excited for the upcoming Dead Space remake. The original is available on Xbox 360, PS3, and PC, but of course we do have the remake coming out soon for modern platforms. I recently played through all the Dead Space games on Game Pass, and I gotta say that the first one is probably my favorite. It's a unique sci-fi horror experience where your weapons and abilities are a little unconventional, but perfect for the job, since chopping off enemy limbs is the best way to dispatch them. I also really enjoy the story of the first game. It's subtle and complex, like the gameplay elements themselves. There's no health bar on the HUD like a typical game, but Isaac's health indicator is built into his suit. I liked how Isaac was a silent protagonist too, and how you generally always had control of him. There weren't really any cutscenes that just rip you out of the participant experience and into the audience rule. Dead Space does a lot of work to put the player in Isaac's shoes and make them feel vulnerable. The remake is going to change a lot of this vibe since they're going to make Isaac a voiced character like he was in the sequels. I think this is going to change the atmosphere of the game significantly. For the better or worse is hard to tell right now. But as it stands, the original game is still well worth playing and I highly recommend giving it a shot. It'll take at least 10 hours for a casual playthrough and it's definitely worth your time. But if you did just want to wait for the remake, that's perfectly okay too. The more I hear about the remake, the more excited I'm getting for it, honestly. Yeah, they're giving Isaac some voice lines this time around and no, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to feel about that. But they've shown that they're going to go the extra mile with this too. Apparently Isaac is actually going to present his dialogue a little differently depending on his current condition. So whether he's in a normal state, fatigued, 
or injured, his dialogue will reflect his current status. And it's that extra attention to detail that has me super hyped for this. If for some reason space zombies aren't doing it for you and Resident Evil is too scary, then maybe try Dying Light. One or two, both have their unique strengths. I don't have the first one installed right now, so you'll just have to make do with gameplay of two, which is available for a bunch of platforms, including Switch, through cloud streaming again, unfortunately. Techland has been constantly updating Dying Light 1 since release. They're doing the same with Dying Light 2, so even if you played at launch, they've changed a few things about it already. The first game has guns, the second game has more of a melee focus. The parkour system is also a little revamped from game to game, and is a big focus in both of them. First person zombie parkour action games with RPG elements and multiplayer. The games only really get scary at night, when zombies are stronger, and the volatiles roam the streets. If they spot you, it'll start a chase as you try to make it back to the safe zone. You'll get increased experience during this time, so it's a risk reward. Enough gameplay elements change from the first to second game to warrant giving both a try. From how you craft and repair weapons to how you navigate the city, as well as the story. I think I like the story of the first game a little better. Main character is voiced by the same guy that did Sonic. But unlike Sonic, neither game is super fast. Dying Light 2 could take you over 20 hours to beat the campaign, but with constant updates and all the content packaged into it, you could spend a lot longer playing it. And if you like games that are big time sinks, then maybe check out Graveyard Keeper. The obvious comparison with this game is Stardew Valley, but you play as Dompe from the Zelda series. This is available for Switch, PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. You get to work on gathering resources to build up your home, make the graveyard look pretty, and you can even farm too. Take on quests from local villagers to build up your relationship with them and open up new options. You can fish, mine, chop wood, slay monsters, and of course harvest materials from dead bodies. I mean, what else does a graveyard keeper do? If you harvest something like blood, you can help preserve the body, and it increases the rank of your graveyard when you bury it. If you harvest vital organs or flesh, then the body can become a complete mess, and it's probably better off just dumped into a river or burned. But you can use those vital resources to craft potions and other cool things. The theme is a bit macabre, but once you start getting things into gear, the gameplay loop is quite addictive, since you're always making progress towards something new. Like upgrades, which allow you to craft new items and gather more resources. Chop wood, get sticks, make sticks into usable planks, craft work table, get more wood, craft more things, you get the idea. Graveyard Keeper can easily keep you occupied for more than 40 hours. This game really makes you feel like you actually have a work ethic and aren't just a lazy bum playing games. And to keep that work ethic moving forward, you should take a look at Ravenous Devils, a game described as a cooking simulator where the secret ingredient is crime. Oh see, that's what was missing from my taco recipe. Available for Switch, PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, in Ravenous Devils you play as a husband and wife who run a tailor and butcher shop. The husband, Percival, runs the tailor while the wife, Hildred, works the butcher shop. But the economy is tough these days. So to save on costs, Percival tends to his customers in a very special way. <laughs> This is a masterpiece. By killing some customers, you can rip their clothes off and tailor those garments into new items. Then you can dump the body down a hatch, where Hildred can grind them up and bake them into pies. It really is a self-sustaining business practice. Work hard and you can earn upgrades which increase the efficiency of your business and add new recipes to cook. There's even a story to follow through the game in case you need more substance to your murder pie mayhem. Ravenous Devils is a short and sweet three hours, which is nice because if it was any longer, the game would probably start to get pretty repetitive. I can only bake so many people into pies before things get stale, you know? And if for some reason none of these games have given you traumatic nightmares, then why not give Little Nightmares a try? Available for Switch, PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and mobile phones, Little Nightmares is a puzzle platforming adventure title with a horror twist. There's also a sequel, but I haven't played that one yet. The game starts off with very little plot given to you. Everything is dark, you're cold and alone, armed with nothing but a lighter to guide your way. You embark on a journey through what appears to be the bowels of a massive ship. Navigating hazards, solving puzzles, and sneaking past hostile enemies are just some of the many activities you can engage in on this luxury nightmare cruise. The little nightmares will have you lying in suspense at every corner as you try to figure out just what the hell is going on here. But that nightmare won't last too long, however, taking you maybe five hours for a casual playthrough. So you might as well check out the sequel right after. Now that's pretty much the end of our little list here. I tried to hit on every note, 
I mean, we got cooking sims, multiplayer games, action RPGs, puzzle platformers, games where you're the monster, games that aren't too scary, others that are very scary, games both old and new, and I'm sure we found just the game for you. Though it is worth noting that I cut a lot of games from this list, the video could have easily been twice as long. A common theme amongst some of these spooky games is that they often have rather short lengths, and while that may upset some, I don't think it's really a bad thing, at least when we're talking about the scary games. You see, when you're playing a scary game, at some point you'll have to find a way to overcome your fear if you want to actually succeed. And that inherently means that by the end the experience will become much less terrifying. So I think it's definitely for the best that these experiences aren't drawn out longer than they need to be. And besides, when a game scares you good enough, that game lives in your head rent free for years after you've played it. Trust me. This stupid blue face still kinda haunts my nightmares. So give these games a try. And keep the Halloween spirit alive for just a little long- Oh, too late. I can already hear Mariah Carey out. I appreciate you and everything you do. Happy holidays, folks.